Okay. When a body is projected vertically upwards and downwards, what happens? Yes. Yaba. Hello, Yaba. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, please. Okay. So, when a body is projected Sir, either vertically... Sir, I can't hear you. Hello? Hello? Sir, please, can I could... Can I hear your question? question? Okay, my question is that... Hello? When a, okay, when a body is projected vertically upwards or downwards, okay, what is the assumption on which this is based? What's the assumption on which a body ve uh, projected vertically upwards or downward is based on? It is based on an, a very important assumption. And because of it is um it is because of that assumption that is why we could say that when you drop a stone and a feather the two will drop to the floor at the same time what is this special assumption on which um free falling and vertically upward motion dwells on okay yaba <laughs> Yaba, go ahead. Gravity. E, gravity, yes. Gravity is there, but it is based on a certain assumption. And if this assumption is not there, it will never work. What is this special assumption? Yes. Let's still uh, refresh our thoughts. Uh, Neglecting a resistance. Neglecting a resistance. Yes. So, Yaba, yes, gravity is the main actor. Okay. But in free falling and in motions under gravity, uh, motions vertically upwards, we neglect air resistance. Because if air resistance happens to be present, there is no way you can drop a stone and a feather. And then you say that the two will drop at the same time. It is only on condition that air resistance is um, neglected. Please, class, are we okay? Yes, please. Now, in physics, our analysis, our considerations, very, very funny. One situation where we neglect air resistance is when the body is free falling. Another consideration where we also neglect air resistance is during in projectile motion. But there are there is another consideration where this time air resistance is expected to rather increase. It's not neglected, but we even figure out some ways to increase air resistance. And a typical example is in the application of uh, paragliding, parachutes, in the launching of parachutes, okay? In the parachutes, we don't, or in paragliding, we don't ignore air resistance. Rather, we create conditions where the air resistance will rather be great so that it will balance force of gravity. And when force of gravity is balanced, then the 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 um the person in the parachute okay drops or comes to the ground with that constant velocity so we have situations where air resistance is welcomed and we have a situation where air resistance is neglected one of it is in projectile motion now what is projectile motion Projectile motion refers to the motion of a body, okay? The motion of a body that is given a certain initial velocity. 
and the body is made to fall under the influence of gravity alone. Okay, so it is the motion of a body. The motion. of a body that is given I hope you can see yes yes please. yes please. And no, oh you can see yes please I can see what's what's the situation like is it blurry is it what is it it's blur I've adjusted the screen. It's better. Okay. Thank you. Thank God it's better. <laughs> so, the motion of a body that is given an initial velocity and falls under the influence of influence of gravity. Okay, and under projectile motion, we assume that air resistance is neglected. In projectile motion, air resistance is neglected. Same as what we witness when a body is free falling. Your hand is raised. Yes, please. Um, yes. In the definition, you wrote the motion of um, a body that is given an initial, you, um, you didn't make oh, the Yes, yes, thank you, thank you. Initial velocity. Oh. Okay, and falls under the influence of gravity. Applications. So, um, one important consideration or assumption, okay, applied under projectile motion is that we assume air resistance is neglected because air resistance affects projectile motions. So, we neglect it. Now, let's look at applications and how air resistance is neglected. You see, during in golfing, in golfing, okay, projectile motion is applied. A hole will be somewhere, the golfer positions the ball and then hits it. By hitting it, he's giving the ball a certain initial velocity. So, application... We talk about golfing. Golfing. We also talk about during javelin, throwing off. Javelin. Javelin. Then this um oh this. American game where a ball is thrown and somebody is at the other end ready to uh, ready to catch the ball. I've forgotten the name given to it, but it's it also dwells on projectile motion. Okay, then rugby. Uh -huh, somebody is helping me. Is it baseball? This is it rugby. No, okay, yes, rugby. It's... Is it baseball, American baseball? Yes, please. Yes. Playing uh, baseball. Okay. Let's, this is one of it, but let's talk about... Then, during the launching of missiles, launching of missiles, in the launching of missiles, Mm 
missiles. In the launching of missiles, when a gun is also fired, firing of firing of a gun. Okay, we can talk about so many applications, but at least let's only limit ourselves to these four. Engulfing, engulfing, throwing of javelin, launching of missiles, firing of a gun are the, the, the clearest applications of projectile motion. Now, let's look at how air resistance is neglected. Look at golfing. When the golfers are playing and the wind velocity is so much, they have to stop it. Even, even in footballing, okay, when, when uh, players are on the field and then the wind velocity is so much, that the match would have to be brought to a hole because air, the air resistance affects the movement of the ball. Okay, when you are playing table tennis in an open place, you cannot even play because air resistance, you see, as you, as you play, you give it a certain initial velocity and the movement of it is affected by the air resistance. Okay, then talk and throwing of missiles, but in, um, in javelin, in javelin, for instance, in javelin, there is a way out. Javelin and then throwing of missiles and then firing of gun. Uh, Ama, are you asking a question? Okay. So if if you've been observant, the the javelin missile looks like this. It has a pointed end. The javelin missile has a pointed end. The reason is that air resistance increases when the surface area also of, of, the, of the material increases. And in javelin, this is the part that you are throwing. So this part that is being thrown has to be made in such a way that it's interaction with air the, the cross-sectional area of this part, which interacts with the air, is very, very, very small. And so the air, it has a, uh, this has a streamlined body at the end. And so it could easily pierce through the air and wouldn't have, have um, a greater resistance. So the, 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 the streamlined shape of the end, okay, reduces air resistance. Please, are we okay? Nobody, yes. nobody yes. throws javelin. Nobody is expected to throw a javelin, and in throwing it, he he or she uses the larger cross-sectional area, uh, throws it in that direction. It will not go. Uh, <laughs> it, it is always. Uh, Amma, please mute yourself for me. I'm gonna mute yourself for me. There is a very bad feedback here. It is always the pointed end that has to that has to go. And if you do that, it will easily pass through the air and then get to the target. Another way of um, neglecting air resistance is has to do with velocity. Look at missile in the throwing of missiles and then firing of a bullet. No military person would fire a bullet, okay, and then wait for when the air resistance is low. You you wouldn't have an idea of when when a situation would happen for which the bullet has to be fired, okay. So they will not wait for air resistance to be low. But it is designed in such a way that the 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 bullet has a pointed end. The pointed end just pierces, passes through the air, okay? Two, it is also giving a maximum velocity so that it will always overcome the velocity of the wind. So these are factors that are put in place to 
um, neglect air resistance because we can't wait for air to, to stop blowing before we fire our bullets, we fire the, uh, the missile and so on and so forth. So these are um, the, the, the small, the streamline, small cross-sectional area, the streamline set end of the bullets and then the maximum speed associated with um, the, the bullets, the missiles ensure that um, wind or air resistance is what neglected. Please, are we okay? Yes, please. All right. Adwa, Akosha Adwa, go ahead. Yes, I have a question. Go ahead. Okay, so if the larger part is used, is it that the velocity would reduce or it wouldn't go at all? You see, if the larger part is used, there will be resistance. So you can't get to the target. Assuming you are throwing a javelin, the javelin missile, and Akosuya, you are no good in throwing it. Instead of it to hold it this way and throw, Akosuya holds it this way and throw, it will go nowhere. <laughs> okay. It will just drop to your foot. <laughs> Is that okay? Mm -hmm. yes. So, because when you increase the cross-sectional area, you increase the air resistance. When we were kids, we used to be playing this game where we tie a cloth to our waist and then hold the upper end. I don't know if you did that before. <laughs> and when you do that, you could mm -hmm. feel, yes, you could feel the air resistance, meaning that... Mm -hmm. When you increase the cross-sectional area, you experience more air resistance against you. Is that please? Is that okay? Yes, please. All right. If you do you have any other question? If no question, then let's go into projectile motion proper. These are the please. um the core meaning in the theories around it. We have thank you. What? <laughs> Go ahead and ask your question. We have what 